Hey there, welcome to class. Thank you so much for tuning in and for wanting to practice with me today. Welcome to the channel if you are new. My name is Flo. Today's class is targeted for athletes, which means you're doing some kind of activity outside of yoga and you want to do a class right after. So I assume you already worked pretty hard and you don't want to do a lot of strength. This is why I didn't put lots of strength in this practice today. It's more of a full body flow, full body stretching class and we will of course connect to the breath and dive deeper into the stillness within to calm down and ground down. This class is also really good on your rest days. So if today is the day where you're taking a break from whatever activity you usually do, it's a very good idea to do this class. Welcome, I'm glad you're here. Because the body, even though it needs rest, is not designed to be in complete stillness and just lay in bed or on the couch all day. Even though it's your rest day, it's still really good to move the body, but just not push it to your limits. All you need for today's practice is your mat. If you don't have that, a carpet is fine as well. We will start in Sphinx pose on our belly. Come onto your mat. If you're not already, come onto the forearms, lower the hips down, untuck your toes. Sphinx pose, starting with a nice, gentle, easy back bend. I could also imagine that you're currently at the gym doing this practice. So you don't want to spend a whole lot of time to arrive and body scan because you already did something so good for your body so you probably feel already connected. If this is your rest day practice then it's also a very nice starting position. Keep the glutes a little bit engaged, press into the forearms, press into the elbows, pull the shoulders back so you broaden the collarbones, connect to the breath, breathe in and out through the nose. If you want, close your eyes at any point throughout this practice. If that doesn't feel good for you, then of course just leave them open. Keep the lips sealed throughout this practice and breathe only through the nose. At least do your best to do so. Slowly release down. Let's push the hips back, come into Balasana, child's pose. Rest the forehead down towards the ground. Just relax here for three breaths. Slowly push forward for tabletop. Come onto all fours. Stay on the toes, send the hips back, move forward, bring the shoulders over the wrists and back. Just two more, forward and again forward and back. Very good, back to neutral. Now the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Send the hips back, stay on the toes, now we're stretching out the forearms. Perhaps you use your arms, your forearms a lot today or they just need some love from the previous days. It's good to stretch them out even if you're just working at your desk and uh, you're on the computer a lot then stretching out the wrists and forearms is really really good sway left and right if you want to very good now the fingers are pointing forward again lift your hips up and back for a downward facing dog keep the knees bent for now move the chest towards the thighs firm into the inner hands push the ground away Keep the lips sealed, reconnect to the breath in case you lost it. Pedal one heel down to the ground and the other. Walk your dog a little. Doesn't matter if the heels are on the ground or not. Keep the knees bent if you need to. Keep pushing the ground away. Keep the legs as straight as you can and then rotate your heels over to the left side. So we're stretching out the right side body, finding some more length there. Back through down dog, through center, over to the right side. Heels down, push the chest towards the thighs, lengthen and breathe into the left side body. Let's come back to center, downward facing dog, very good. 
Lift your heel, bend your knees, walk the feet forward between or behind the hands. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway, lengthen out through the spine, maybe hands to the shins. Exhale, forward fold and down. Step your left foot back for low lunge, set the left knee down, stay on your left toes. We want to still stretch out the left foot and the left toes. Place your hands on top of your right knee, then send the hips forward and down so you feel hopefully a sensation that feels good for you in your body in the front side of your left hip. Especially if you went for a run or a hike or anything like this where you used your legs a lot or if you were sitting a lot today. This is fantastic. Keep the breath going. Send more breath into the area where you feel this in your body. And see if you can slow that breath down a little more. Very good. Release. Straighten your right leg. Heel to the right foot forward so that the left hip is right above the left knee. Fingertips on the ground. If that's too far away for you, use some books or blocks or just walk the hands back and just don't walk them so far forward. Take a deep breath in. Lengthen out through the spine. Exhale. Fold forward and down. Keep the right foot flexed so that the right toes are pointing towards your face. With every inhale, you lengthen through the spine. On your exhale, fold forward and down over the right leg. If it feels good for you, you can windshield wiper the right foot to the right and to the left. See how that feels. Maybe it feels good, then keep doing it. If it doesn't feel good, then please stop. No need to force it. If you tend to hyperextend in your right knee, just be aware of it. Check in with the right knee. It's good to keep a micro bend there. Very nice. Rebend the right knee. Move forward. Come onto your left toes if you're not already. Straighten both legs. Pivot both feet to the left. Prasarita standing straddle forward fold. When you're ready, fold forward and down. If you look to the heels, make sure the heels are wider apart than the toes. So the heels are out, the toes are in, fold forward and down. No need to come with the forearms down to the ground, that's just what feels good for me. If you're a lot higher up here but still feel it in your body, we're targeting the back side of the, of the legs. If you feel it somewhere there or the inner thighs, then it's all good. If you don't feel it anywhere, also okay because you can still breathe in and out through the nose and work on being present by using the breath. Feel free to stay here or interlace your hands behind the back. Move the arms and hands up and over your head for a little bit of a shoulder stretch, especially if you use your arms and your shoulders today. Invite all the little movements that just come up that your body is telling you to do. Just follow that, no need to hold still. Release the hands down, take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, Skandasana to the left. Bend your left knees straight in the right. It's okay if you're not squatting down as deep as I do here. Maybe your heel is lifted. Maybe your hips are lifted higher. It doesn't matter. We're all just doing our best today. Move to the front of the mat. Plank pose. Plant the hands down first. Push the ground away. Step the right foot back. Plank pose. Not much strength here, I know. I told you. And it's still the case. We're just going to shift forward. Come high onto the toes. Bend your arms low all the way down to the ground with control. Again, Sphinx pose, untuck the toes, forearms forward and down. Engage the glutes, press into the elbows, into the forearms, pull the shoulders back, broaden the collarbones. The glutes are engaged, the breath is soft. And release down. Push it back to Balasana, child's pose, just as a transition to downward facing dog. Take your time to arrive here. Feel the sensation in the body, feel the breath. Feel the stability coming up from within while you are in this shape. 
and let that stability expand from the physical to the mental, emotional. When you're ready, lift your heels, walk the feet forward between the hands. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold and down. Step the right foot back, other side, low lunge. Set the right knee down. Stay on the right toes. Place your hands on top of your left leg. Shift the hips forward. Try to stay upright with your upper body. Keep the tailbone slightly tucked so you're not going too much into a back bend. You really want to isolate the front side of your right hip. And you do that best by tucking the tailbone. That way you also don't have to go forward this deep in order to feel a sensation there. Just breathe into it. Sometimes it helps to push the right knee forward, pull the left foot back. Try it out for yourself, see how that feels. And release for a half split. Straighten your left leg, perhaps heel toe the foot forward. Hands or fingertips down to the ground, deep breath in to lengthen out through the spine. Exhale to fold forward and down over your left leg. Remember that micro bend in the left knee. The left foot is flexed so that the toes are pointing towards you. Just three deep breaths here. Feel free to move around with the left foot if you want to, otherwise just stay here and breathe. Take your time to come out of the pose, re-bend the left knee, plant both feet down, pivot both, both feet to the right, and standing straddle, forward fold on the other side. The other side meaning facing the other side of the mat. Now you can just relax forward and down, wherever you are, make sure the foundation is right so that the heels are wider apart than the toes. Then just stay here, hang out in this forward fold or if you feel like a twist, you can bring the right hand down to the ground, straighten the right arm, reach your left arm up towards the ceiling, keep both legs straight, at least do your best, pull the belly in, really have that rotation come from the upper body and not just staying halfway in the twist but then pulling the arm back, really find that rotation from the upper body and the left arm is reaching straight up. Let's switch sides, reach your arm your left arm up and forward, up and over your head, switch sides, left hand down, right arm up. It's pretty normal that one side feels tighter than the other or just uneven. Doesn't mean it's a bad side, it's just a little different. The body is usually not very symmetrical or perfectly symmetrical, so it's all good. Reach your right arm forward, release down. Let's all meet here again, deep breath in to lengthen. Exhale, spider lunge to the right, skandhasana, bend your right knee, straighten the left. Again, your variation that feels good for you. From here, move towards the front of the mat, towards the left foot. For plank pose, take your time, bring the hands down first, step the left foot back, tuck your tailbone, engage the core, shift forward, come high into the toes, bend your arms slowly, lower down, all the way. Sphinx pose again. Last time, untuck the toes, press into the elbows. Breath nice and soft through the nose, especially if the heart rate went up in this short little flow today. That's good. Even on rest days, that's good to bring the heart rate up a little bit, not too much. It's really all about knowing your boundaries, but still staying active. The body is designed to move. It's not designed to, to sit or lay on a couch or in bed. Although that's also nice sometimes. And those days have their place as well. It's all about balance as with everything. 
Feel free to stay here for a couple more breaths or if you want to go deeper into a back bend, you can either straighten your arms for seal pose or let's come into upward dog if you feel like it. For that you release down, hands down next to your uh, chest, keep the toes untucked, the feet wide apart, straighten your arms upward facing dog. Let's stay for three more breaths. So you could be now in sphinx or seal or upward facing dog. Keep the glutes engaged either way, wherever you are. Last deep breath in all together. And exhale, release. Let's all come back to downward facing dog. And if you are in Sphinx, you can either move through Balasana or push up. Let's all just meet here, find your way into down dog. The lips are still, se still sealed, the breath is soft. Let's take a deep breath in here through the nose. Open mouth, let it all go. Take two more just like that on your own. For the last one, close your eyes. Very good, seal the lips, set the knees down. Sit on the heels, untuck the toes. Sit tall. Extend your arms out to your sides, but down towards the body and start to move or kind of pump or fly like a butterfly, the arms forward and back. You want to go so far back with the arms that you might even feel some sensation in your chest area. Slowly start to lift the arms up, but keep doing that butterfly movement all the way up and over your head. Slowly back down to the side. And let's do one more just like that. Slowly going up, really pull the hands back. Find that bouncing rhythm and back down nice and slow. Very good. Place your hands on top of your knees or maybe in your lap, wherever it feels good for you. We'll stay here for about two minutes and you can either continue in this seated position, make it a seated meditation or if you already feel like it, then just come onto your back for Shavasana and relax. You're going to be here wherever you are for two minutes to finish up practice. So settle in, get comfortable, do whatever feels good. Do all the adjustments that make you feel good and relaxed. Keep the lips sealed, continue to observe the breath. If you're seated, lengthen out through the spine more. Feel that length, that line of energy from the base of your spine, the middle of your pelvis and your hips, going all the way up through the throat, up the back side of your head, up towards the ceiling. It's this effortless line of energy and strength. If you're on your back in Chavasana, just relax. Let the body melt into the ground. Wherever you are, be a little bit more heavy and grounded. Feel the air coming in and out through the nose. Continue just like that. I highly recommend that you stay here for a bit longer, even though the video will end now. Thank you very much for practicing with me today. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.